Thank you for dropping by for my daily devotions. This is December 19th, 2022. We're going to look at James chapter 1, Luke chapter 8, Psalm 32, and Isaiah chapter 25. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today through these great passages of Scripture. Uh, write your word on our heart and change us from the inside out by the power of your word and the truth and the power of your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. James chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's amazing. He's, he's Jesus' half-brother, okay? And how does he start out? James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a servant. Uh, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, Perseverance <clears throat> must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously <clears throat> to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. The brother in hum humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in his low position, because he will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he does, even while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God has tempted me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does anyone, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desires he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is, is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, and that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, Get rid of all moral filth and all evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word and does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it. He will be blessed in all he does. If anyone considers himself religious and does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. The first chapter of James is uh, powerful, powerful. He doesn't miss much. Doesn't miss much. And then Luke chapter 8. After that, Jesus traveled about from town to town and from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene. Uh, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering, the people were coming to Jesus from town after town. He told his disciples, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on. And the birds of the air came and ate it up. Some fell on rock where it came up, Plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was than, than was sown. He, 
when he said this, he called out, he who has ears, let him hear. His disciples asked him about this parable, what it meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that see, those seeing they may not see, and though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the evil devil comes and takes away the word that was in their hearts, so that they may not believe and so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in not but in time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. The seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. No one lights a lamp and puts it and hides it in a jar or puts it under a, a bed. Instead, he puts it on a stand so that those who come so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will not be made known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more, and whoever does not have even what he thinks he has will be taken from him. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. That's his family, people who obey him. Now, one day Jesus said to his disciples, go over to the other side of the lake. So they got in the boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him. Master, master, we're going to drown. Everything's a crisis, you know. And Jesus is sleeping through that. <laughs> Imagine that. He got up, rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, who is this? He even command, he, he commands the winds and the water and they, they obey him. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirits to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard. He had broken his chains and had, driven, had been driven by the demons into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What's your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had come into him. And they begged him repeatedly not to order them in, to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let him go into them, and, they, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the bank into the, into the lake and was drowned. Then those tending the pigs saw what had happened. They ran off and reported it in the town and the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man who, who, from whom the demons had, been, had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had, been, had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region and the garrisons asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all, all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. When a man named Jairus, the father of the synagogue, the ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. As Jesus was on the way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who was subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. 
She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. And Jesus said, Someone touched me and I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not, not go unnoticed, came trembling at, the, at his feet and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she, she, uh, she told why she, why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, I love this. Don't be afraid. Just believe and she'll be healed. Don't fear. Just believe. Belief is always the opposite of of, of fear, okay? Got to remember that. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, my child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up then Jesus said to them, then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Then Psalm 32. Got to read Psalms or Proverbs every day. Need a little wisdom, folks. That's wisdom literature, they call it. Psalm 32, a Psalm of David. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and who in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, though my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was sapped, as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to, to you uh, while you may be found. Surely the mighty, water rise, the, the mighty waters rise. They will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, and I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not... Be like the horse or the mule, which has no height, no no under, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord is the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in Him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. Be righteous and sing, all you who are upright in heart. And then Isaiah chapter twenty five. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done marvelous things, things planned long ago. You've made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin. The foreigner's stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will honor you. Cities of ruthless Nathans will revere you. You've been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in, in his distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall and like the heat of the desert. You're silent, you silence the uproar of foreigners as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud. So the song of ruthless is stilled. On the mountains, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all the peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Wow. And the sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. who We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain, on Moab, and Mo but Moab will be trampled under him as straw is trampled down in the manure. 
They will spread out their hands in it as a swimmer spreads out his hands to swim. God will bring down their pride despite the cleverness of their hands. He will bring down the high fortified walls and lay them low. He will bring them down to the ground to the very dust. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us today. Apply it to our hearts. Write a fresh law on our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit by the truth of your word. Make us new today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.